Hi, I'm Jan the Head Rag Dragger and I wrote the book The Lost Art of House Cleaning which is available at Amazon.com. This is the first in a series of videos where I will give real-time hands-on demonstrations on how to clean the various segments that are in one of the chapters of the book called the Nitty Gritty. Today, the first one that we're going to do is the stove section of the kitchen. And that's simply because, probably without a doubt, it is the dirtiest place in any house. You cook, you have grease, you have moisture, you have all sorts of things. When you do any job, you should always do the worst thing first. If you do the worst thing first, everything else after that is pretty much a skate downhill. The first thing you do is when you're ready to start cleaning is A, get dressed for the job. Take off the jewelry, take off the rings. Ooh, by the way. Take off the jewelry, take off the rings, and be prepared to get dirty cleaning. First thing you want to do is assemble your tools. In the book, I list what to buy, where to buy it, how to use it, why you use it. I also recommend, I don't say you need to, but I recommend that you get the caddy and you load the caddy up with your tools. Basically what we have is cred cutter, 100%, white vinegar, not diluted, I didn't say vinegar and water, I said white vinegar, and then we have cred cutter, cut five parts water, one part cred cutter. We also have our green scrubby, we have our black detail brush, we have our large white detail brush, and I also have white terry cloth rags and microfiber rags. Okay, now that you have all your tools and you know exactly what you're going to do, the first thing you're going to do is fill up your sink with the hottest water that you have available and a great big shot of crud cutter 100%. And I would almost suggest in a kitchen sink full of water you can put as much as a half a cup to a cup of crud cutter. The reason why is crud cutter will do the work for you if you let it. After your sink is full, you go back to your stove range area and you start taking out all, taking off all the things that you can throw in the sink and let soak. The crud cutter will clean them when you go back and clean the rest of the stove. Uh, in the book, I told you that the night before you're going to tackle this job, run the self-clean cycle on your oven. If your oven does not have a self-clean cycle, you're really going to have to save cleaning the inside of the oven for another day. Maybe you did it yesterday, maybe you can do it tomorrow, but you don't want to try and do it while we're doing the rest of this section of the kitchen. Now we're ready to actually start cleaning. In, as I explained in the book, when you do a slice, and this is the stove slice in a kitchen, you start from the top to the bottom. But again, we've got one more prep job we need to do. First thing is your microwave. Open the door and spray the inside of your microwave. Soak it with Crud Cutter 100%. From your sink, throw a clean white rag into your sink. Soppy, drippy, drippy, wet. Put it in the microwave, close the door, and run it for two minutes. Basically what's going to happen is the water in the rag is going to boil, it's going to create steam, it's going to fill the microwave with steam, and between the steam and the crud cutter, everything in here will soften up. So when we're ready to clean this part, it, everything will be ready to come off the walls. If we look in here in this stove where we took the burners and the plates off, we have a whole lot of dirt. And again, the crud cutter will do the job for you if you let it. So before we even start, we want to get our crud cutter 100% and spray this whole section of the stove and make sure you get in here to get all this out um, so that while we're cleaning up here and working our way down here, it's going to soften all of the stuff and get it clean. Okay, so now we're actually ready to start the job. It's very important that you get close to your work. Not a whole lot of stretching. You're going to end up hurting yourself and then you're going to quit and you'll never clean your house again. So I'm on a step stool right now so that I'm eye level with my working surface, which in this case right now is the microwave oven. This unit here has the two screws in the front. In my book, I explain that when you're removing these screws that are in the front, you have to push to break, um, you have to push very hard at, while you're turning the screw in order to get it out. If you just roll your little, your screwdriver across the front of it, you're going to strip this little section in here, whatever that's called, and you'll never get the screw out. 
Um, I teach my girls that when they remove the screws from the microwave, that they put them in this top cabinet right here. So that when you finish the job a couple of hours later, you know exactly where the screws are. Put them in there because when we clean, like I said in the book, we don't go into any cabinets, closets, doors, or drawers. So we will not be cleaning the inside of this cabinet. We'll just be cleaning the doors and the hardware. If you have the microwave that has the screws on the top that are holding the grill on, the same thing. Take your screws out, open your door, put them in. Now we're ready to remove the grill from the microwave. In order to do that, you must open the door and your grill cover, some units require that you shift it slightly to the left. It has little plastic hooks in there. This one though is just going to pull out and you'll see the dirt. And now we bring it over the sink and we spray all sides with the cred cutter. And remember, the cred cutter will do the work for you. So by the time we get back to this, to actually scrub it, clean it, uh, it's pretty much going to be a simple case of rinsing it. The cred cutter would have dissolved all the grease. Of course, there are some of these things that are so dirty that you may have to spray, scrub, rinse, spray, scrub, rinse. Um, like I said in the book, you clean it until it's clean. So after you've taken care of that, leave it and go back to the stove. Okay. We also need to remember to take this grease screen that's under the, uh, on the bottom side of the microwave. And these, uh, depending on the model of microwave you have, there could be one, two, or three. This um, particular unit only has one, and that's another piece that we're going to throw into our sink and let the crud cutter soak clean until we're ready to actually clean it. Um, we ran our rag on the inside. We cooked it for two minutes, uh, so that's soaking. And now what we're going to do is spray the whole exterior of the range area before we actually start cleaning. This way the cred cutter will start softening up all the dirt and we should be able to get it off quite easily without having to do a lot of scrubbing. If you were standing where I am, this wall is actually fuzzy. And it's fuzzy because while cooking was being done, the um, heat rises, it's got grease in it, it's going to touch whatever it gets near, so it's landed on this wall and dust has eventually accumulated. So remember, it's top to bottom, so what we need to do is, before we actually clean the cabinet, we need to clean this wall. Crud cutter will clean any painted surface with no work, really a quite simple And I said in the book, the grease rises, the heat rises, and everything, everything that what goes up must come down. So it's going to come down on all the horizontal surfaces. So this edge of your cabinet, this edge of your cabinet, this edge, this edge, and obviously the range are the dirtiest planes that you're going to clean. So what we'll do is, again, we're going back to spray it with the crud cutter, and if you notice, I spray both doors and then I go back and I clean the first door that I sprayed. That was just enough time for the cred cutter to soften the dirt and clean the cabinet. And then I clean the second door. Again, the cred cutter was able to soften the dirt and clean, then all we have to do is wipe. We don't have to scrub. We don't have to kill ourselves. And one of the things that you'll notice is <clears throat> when you do a painted surface, you're going to see white street stripes that are going to happen. Or in this case, our little, our cabinet is painted a salmon color. And we had one spot was whiter than the other. And the reason was, was I sprayed it with the crud cutter. And as it runs down, it will actually clean the runs better than the rest of it. So go back and even off the dirt. 
After you clean the outside, you clean the inside. And look at the inside of your cabinets and you'll see how much dirt is actually on the insides. And just simply with a rag, all of the dirt wipes off. No scrubbing, just let the crud cutter do the work for you. So it really ends up being, for the most part, unless your kitchen is just so grubby that you should probably burn it rather than try to clean it. Um, using the crud cutter, it really ends up almost being a simple matter of spraying and wiping. So now your cabinets are clean, your handles are clean, your hardware is clean. Then we move down. While you're cleaning, your rags are going to get either wet or dirty. When they do, just throw it down, get yourself another rag. That's why when in the book I explain, buy yourself a couple dozen rags. Okay, now we're going to clean the front of the microwave oven and make sure you get the handle. Make sure you get all of these edges around here. There are a few microwaves that have a, an additional charcoal filter that's in here behind the grill. You can pull that out and clean it. This one doesn't have one, so we just have one less filter to Okay, now that we've... Then we'll be ready to finish the rest of it. 